this is case 23. We have a nodule in the dermis here, and it's cellular, So, and there's some weird purple stuff in the middle. So before we look at the dermis, I think it, this is the important thing, is normal dermis and normal epidermis here. The reedy get a little long here, and then suddenly the epidermis looks very different, and then it goes back kind of to normal. So the, the reedy ridges are kind of effaced and lost here, flattened out or absent. So the first thing I would think at low power, on, if I only had this slide, is I would think of a dermatofibroma. Because it looks like a nodule of spindle cells. It looks like there's collagen trapping at the edge. There's epidermal hyperplasia and flattening of the reedy over top. Okay, the other thought would be that there could be a scar here uh, from a biopsy site. And that's actually uh, both true in this case. So here we do have a dermatofibroma, looking closer, because there's thick collagen, there's plump spindle cells, uh, haphazardly arranged, and as I mentioned, there's many, many different patterns of dermatofibroma. I have lots of videos and posts about that on YouTube and Kiko. You can check them out. There's collagen trapping at the periphery, and the epidermis gets thickened over top and uh, tends to have flattening of the reedy. And sometimes when you pick and rub or irritate a dermatofibroma, you will get a kind of effaced epidermis and flattened, even thinned atrophic epidermis. People often teach that there's a Grenz zone, a zone of normal dermis between a dermatofibroma and the overlying epidermis. But in my experience, if you pick and scratch at a dermatofibroma and get uh, reactive changes, that Grenz goes away and the dermatofibroma pushes right up against the epidermis and the epidermis begins to thin out. So this is a dermatofibroma. But it's been previously punch biopsied, and I think because it was a large dermatofibroma, probably irritating to the patient, they went ahead and just did a small excision to remove the whole, the whole thing. But it had been biopsied with a punch, okay? And so here you can see this, this hole coming down through that has serum uh, crust and inflammation in it, fibrin, and underneath there is this purple weird material that is like jagged, irregular triangle shapes arranged in kind of chains. If you've never seen this, you will have no clue what it is. If you've seen it once, you will recognize it forever. This is gel foam. And so uh, a lot of dermatologists like to use, uh, if you do a punch biopsy with like a four millimeter punch, um, some people will just put a little plug of gel foam in there in, instead of doing a suture. And um, I'm not a dermatologist and don't, uh, don't do biopsies. I, I haven't done them since training. Uh, in fellowship, but um, uh, my understanding from my derm colleagues is that actually uh, has a really great effect and works just as well and has the same cosmetic result as putting a suture in it in many examples. So uh, I'll let you uh, consider that and talk to your dermatology colleagues to see what they think about it. Um, but that's what I've heard from people is that uh, putting gel foam into a punch biopsy can be an effective way to stop the bleeding and uh, allow it to, to heal up nicely. So in this case, they just removed the rest of the dermatofibroma. So we, we rarely get to see this because oftentimes after the punch is done, unless it's a cancer or something, it's often not removed. And so the gel foam stays there until it's absorbed. So uh, pathologists may recognize gel foam because they see it used elsewhere uh, by surgeons elsewhere in the body. But in the skin, uh, you will only occasionally encounter it. So that's a nice example of, of gel foam here in the midst of a juicy, big dermatofibroma. How fun.